When most people think about the desert, you think about a dry, lifeless place. Raw and unforgiving. But for me, it's also a place of great beauty. The silence of the desert allows me to really reflect on the true beauty of Mother Nature. I'm about to head into one of the most inhospitable environments on Earth. Its name says it all, Death Valley. More than three million acres of desert stretched along the California-Nevada border. And my journey across it will take me through a land of record-setting extremes. First, I'll traverse the Badwater Salt Flats, the lowest spot below sea level in the Western Hemisphere. Once in Death Valley, I'll be completely on my own. So before I enter the most severe terrain in the US, I want to learn as much as I can about the dangers that lie ahead. G'day mate, how's it going? Oh, pretty good. Rock Novak man's the last outpost on the southwestern rim of the valley. This is my last chance to pick up vital supplies. Might have to get some water off you, mate, before I head out there. You definitely want to have a spare tire, a jack and a lug wrench, yep. and plenty of water and food in case something happens. Because very few people come out here. So if you break down, you're pretty much on your own. So, Rock, what the bloody hell are you doing living out here, mate? I like it out here because it's freedom. Yeah. You just come out here and just do as you want and live and have a peaceful, free soul. And, and I like it out here. I heard these like 700 foot high sand dunes out here. Is it Eureka dunes they're called? Or? Mm -hmm. They're way out there. Right. I mean, they're hours away, and yep. uh, you should have a four wheel drive mm -hmm. or a motorcycle or something like that. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of rough road and stuff to go on. I wanted to go out to these salt flats as well, because they're meant to be these, like, these beautiful patterns in the salt. Mm -hmm. And Rock, I want to do a bit of photography around the town here. Oh, so yeah. can I shoot yeah, like. Sure. Go around, take all the pictures you like, have fun. That's what you're out here for. All right, Rock, thanks, mate. Sunset out here in Death Valley, one of my favourite times to shoot. You can see you got that beautiful golden light shining on the cliffs there. And I'm set up the Linhoff 617. It's a panoramic camera, so I can get this super wide field of view out here. And I'm going to throw a roll of black and white film in here. It's something I haven't done for a while, but I think it really suits this moment because you've got the old truck, the old shack, and the later afternoon light is going to hit those mountains in the background. So we'll just load some film up here and capture that magic moment. Just love it. Something you don't see a lot of these days, but it just represents to me the old real charm and classic character of America. I know I use digital cameras a lot of the time, but sometimes there's something just really special about capturing it on film. Welcome to the Salt Flats here in the Badwater Basin of Death Valley National Park. 282 feet below sea level, the lowest place in America. Out here on the Salt Flats, the temperatures can get absolutely ridiculous. The hottest temperature ever recorded in the Western Hemisphere, a roaring 134 degrees, happened right here. And in Australia, we call that a bloody scorcher, mate. The reason I'm out here this afternoon is to photograph these beautiful patterns on the desert floor. It's actually dried salt. For thousands of years, floodwaters from the mountain peaks across Death Valley have drained into the lower spot below sea level, forming temporary lakes. The water quickly burns off in the blistering heat, leaving behind minerals that were dissolved in it. And it dries in these really concentric patterns, sort of like a kaleidoscope across the desert floor. And the reason I'm down here at this low level taking this shot, it completely changes the perspective. I want to see these beautiful patterns in the foreground. Because if you get up higher, the whole thing changes. I like being down low, it's that key to perspective. It just makes a huge difference. I'm firing off a couple of shots, 
but so far I'm not happy with the compositions. I don't really feel right about the patterns. You can see these here, they've sort of got imperfections in them and dips. So I want to head out further and look for that perfect shot. What's really hard about it though, every foot that I take, everything changes. I mean, there's some beautiful patterns here, but there's not so good ones in the background. The sun isn't helping me out either. Right now, the light's really working against me. I mean, you can see there's no definition at all in the patterns here, and it could take me all day to get that perfect shot. But the sun's already starting to go down. I need to kick it into high gear. I really like the shape in the middle of all these other ones. The patterns are becoming a lot more accentuated and a lot more natural. These are the sort of patterns that I'm looking for here. I think I've found my shot. But even though I've barely beaten sunset, now I need to sit back and wait. Well, like most of you might think the magic time to get a photograph is right now when you see the sun on that horizon there. I need to wait for the sun to drop completely behind the horizon and a different light to sort of creep in. It's called civil twilight. Civil twilights are brief windows. One just before sunrise and another just after sunset, when the atmosphere still reflects light coming from below the horizon. You get this beautiful painterly feel in the sky, beautiful soft glows, and those magical purple hues on the horizon. Go look at that sky firing up now. Look at that. This is that moment of civil twilight that I was talking about. When the sun goes down, a whole new world opens up. Just look at it out here. You can see the colours even just changing right in front of me. It goes from deep purples to pinks. The critical time of the day to shoot right now. I've got to quickly rip off as many shots as I can just before darkness sets in and hope I can capture just one awesome image. Every time I press the shutter, it's a completely different scene out here. Two minutes ago, that was sort of a purpley hue. Now they're this beautiful, bright pink. Civil Twilight vanishes as quickly as it came. The colours are gone and the shot's over. It happened so fast, I don't even know if I got it. It's my heart racing as you hope you get that shot. I just spent a full day in Death Valley trying to capture the extremes of the American desert on film, and I may have just missed my chance. I've waited eight hours for this one second. But did I get the shot? Looking good. This is that serene moment I was talking about. Out in the middle of the salt flats here, and you can see that beautiful twilight on the horizon there. It's just that really soft, balanced light I want to capture. This has been amazing.